Welcome to the EKG Guy if this is your first time. We're so glad you're joining us. And welcome back if you're returning. So we're going through our EKG coding reference guide and walking through each code that we can actually interpret on the EKG so we're able to understand it. We've put together this coding reference guide for you to not only review and reference the code, but also uh, try to use it as you're interpreting EKGs. So if you don't have access and you'd like it, what you want to do is put this link into your search bar, okay, that URL, put that in, uh, put your email address in, click submit, you'll get an email, check your email for a link, and then from the link you'll be able to have access to this coding reference guide. You'll see these drop down menus, and we're going through each one of them uh, here. Now if you're a returning member, you can go to that link, put your email in, click submit, and you'll bypass that. So this is just the first time uh, you sign up. All right, so now we're looking at atrial premature complexes. Okay, premature atrial complexes, another way to say it. Uh, and that's where we're at now. So if you go to the rhythm section, so, uh, part two, click down this and go to that, you'll be able to follow along with us. So atrial premature complexes also refer to premature atrial complexes or PACs. Okay, these are premature P waves. They're often a non-sinus P wave morphology, and they have a normal appearing QRS complex. Okay, uh, so what's happening is that you have this ectopic foci, okay, or focus in the atria that's firing. So if you imagine, this is your heart. This is your right atrium your left atrium, your right ventricle and left ventricle. You have your conduction system with your sinus node here. These internodal pathways come to an AV node. You have a Bachman bundle here, his bundle, the right bundle branch, the left bundle branch with the left anterior and posterior fascicles, okay? So normally the conduction starts here at the sinus node. And when we have these ectopic focus, what that means is that there's a place that's ectopic, meaning outside of the sinus node that's firing. So if you imagine a area within this atria is becoming almost pre-excited, okay, or, you know, contracting before the sinus node. So imagine the sinus node is firing, but eventually you have one where this, okay, imagine sinus node fires. These are all sinus P waves, but imagine that you have one that, where you have it fires early, fires early, and then occurs a little earlier than the expected P wave, okay, with a different morphology. That could be coming from this area, okay? Essentially, it could be coming from anywhere in the atria that's outside of the sinus node. Now, because it's coming from outside the sinus node, that's why you see these different P wave morphologies. But you can imagine if the ectopic focus occurred somewhere near, maybe here, from the sinus node, okay, then it may have a similar morphology as the impulse propagation is very similar. Now, what also happens is you have the conduction, imagine, goes to the AV node, conducts through the rest of the atrial tissue, and then down, okay, down to the left and right bundle branches, to the fascicles, to the Purkinje fibers, and the cardiomyocytes, and the ventricles. So everything below the AV node is normal, and that's why we say normal appearing QRS complexes, okay, similar to the baseline. It's really just the P waves that are changing, okay, in morphology. Now, what also happens is that you have a P wave that's conducting down, so we call that anterogradely, okay, going down the system, but there's also a retrograde conduction that actually resets the sinus node, okay? So it resets the sinus node, and as a result, uh, it can uh, cause a non-compensatory pause, okay? So what that means is that if you have a normal P wave, and then you have your atrial premature contraction with a different one, normally it probably would have came here, but it's coming earlier, okay? And then you have another P wave that follows that's now normal, okay? What you have instead of this to this, to this, okay, if you imagine this is x and this is x, so the total here is 2x, okay, this beat is actually coming earlier, okay, and that's called a non-compensatory pause instead of it occurring 
at this area here, okay? And that's because the sinus node is being reset. So if you look here, it says atrial premature complexes will often conduct back to the sinal atrial node or SA node, which is the same as the sinus node, okay? Same name, resetting the node, causing a temporary pause in sinus activity, okay? In the event that the uh, there's SA entrance block exit, okay, meaning that it can't exit, it prevents it from going back into the sinus node, okay? And as a result, it will not reset. So if there's something blocking the entrance here, it won't reset and we'll get an interpolated beat, okay? An extra QRS complex between otherwise constant uh, R to R intervals, okay? Or even a full compensatory pause. So that's also positive. Now, what, uh, what you really wanna know is that it's pretty much the fastest pacemaker of the heart tends to set the electrical activity. And that's why it's sometimes this occurs faster than the sinus node, and that's why we have those premature beats that occur. So if you look here at the EKG, you can see that here's our normal P wave, normal P wave. These are all sinus P waves, okay? Same down here. And then you have this beat that occurs, okay? Notice that that P wave okay, looks different from those that precede it, okay? And then you have another P wave, sinus, 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 and it looks like this one may actually be one. You may have noticed this one as well. So we almost have a few PACs here, here, and likely here, okay? So notice that it's premature, different morphology, non-sinus P wave morphology, okay? It looks different than our sinus P wave. It's occurring premature, meaning earlier than expected, okay? If you were to look at that, if I take this off, you can pretty much tell that it's coming early. Here's our sinus P wave. Here's a sinus P wave. You would almost expect it to occur somewhere between here, okay? But it's occurring earlier and that's where that premature so it's a premature atrial beat and notice that the qrs complexes that we see here are all the same so this qrs complex here is the same as that one they all look the same so it's everything conduction below into the ventricles is the same here okay now these are common there tends to be less of a frequency with uh with age so as you get older there tends to be less they're typically benign you may have some palpitations Okay, and it can uh, trigger actually re-entrant tachyarrhythmia. So that's one thing to uh, be aware of. Now, some causes include anxiety, myocardial ischemia, hypokalemia, low magnesium levels. There's some medications uh, that can cause it, such as even caffeine, beta agonist, digoxin, toxicity. So this is atrial premature complexes or PACs, premature atrial complexes, okay? So same thing. And hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully you understand, you know, what's happening. You have this ectopic foci that's firing early, has a different uh, P wave morphology. But remember, if it occurs near the sinus node, it may actually look the same as the sinus P wave. All right. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. Now, just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available. So again, if you go to our website, www.ekg.md, Okay, so this is our website, and what you'll notice is that if you go to the EKG course here, okay, you'll find stuff that's separate. So notice that we have a number of topics, practice material, lectures, a way for you to contribute, and this is the course here over here. So you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so, and that's more on YouTube. There's another 100 more than 100, about 200 videos that are available with the course. So those are separate videos. And this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter, okay? So completely separate from what you're getting online for free, okay? These are um, course material that comes with it. So notice that you have a book, okay? And then you also have the pocket guide available. So you can choose which format. They are the same thing, both these uh, book and the pocket guide. Uh, different formats. Uh, I really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket and it's really available on the go. Now with the book you also get videos. So notice these are the videos, okay? And these are a video for every single page in that book. So it's over 30 hours of video. Now there's a number of practice material that I continue to upload there, okay? We'll have practice questions coming soon. Uh, so all of that's available. Again, this is separate from all the free material that you get 
already. Okay, so this is more high yield stuff. This is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here and our students here at Mayo Clinic. And it's used now among many institutions. So use the, check that out. Now, what it also includes are calipers. So yes, you get calipers with this course, okay? Um, I don't know anyone else that offers that, but you do get calipers. I think they're very helpful and they can, uh, you know, if you know how to use them correctly, uh, can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on, okay? And then you also get our pocket EKG reference, okay? This was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows, uh, and this is really nice. It has every code, as you saw earlier, laid out there, very small pocket guide available. I had help with uh, my colleague, Dr. Peter Noseworthy, who's the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic and editing it. So this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful. So go to the EKG course, you'll see examples of lectures, okay, why we developed this, okay. A lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning EKGs, having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and, you know, still struggling. So uh, my struggle is a struggle that I don't want you to have in learning them, okay. You can read all those introductory books, but honestly, they are not uh, enough, okay. And you find yourself using other resources, which is part of the learning process. I wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what I struggled with going and learning through EKG. So again, from beginner to advanced level with this course, uh, you get the book, the calipers, the coding reference, video access, okay? And now we're offering 25% off. 25% off, put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself 25% um, off that will even it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material. So uh, we don't really make much off it. It's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care. That's why we do this and we love doing it. So thank you so much for your support. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them below and we're happy to answer them. All right, have a great day.